to send uh, my commendations that this is this is a really terrific television uh, season of television. Honestly, I think you guys really upped the ante from the first season, and you you crafted a case here that to me uh, is so topical and so relevant. Well, you know, the first season really tackles that idea and those themes of religion um, and and potentially cult behavior. Um, we've got com- you know in the conversation for this season a lot of themes regarding uh, racism, toxic masculinity, uh, and to a degree, even the manipulation of media to further agendas, mm-hmm. um, which to me, it's it's crazy to think that a show about the depression uh, could be more relevant today than ever, you know? Oh, yeah. um, so oh, yeah. I wanted to ask, um, since the show's debut in 2020, you know, did the state of really current affairs since then influence the exploration of those themes in this season? And where did a lot of this come into the conversation? Um, I'll start yeah. and then and then I think for us, um, we, we honestly are just trying to drive through character and really explore in an authentic way what people were going through at that time. We had designed the show where we have our three leads as sort of outsiders taking on a larger system. And then through research and and again, trying to figure out what gauntlet we wanna take these characters on, ideas start to form. Um, as a result, you end up with something that is wildly topical, but that we don't start from that place. Because if you're just driving through human stories, even though it's nearly 100 years ago, which is just crazy, <laughs> um, so much of what people go through remains the same. And while there's been a lot of advances in technology, there's been not nearly as many in humanity. And that allows for these topics to be kind of seen through this you know, historic prism, but still resonate today. I, I couldn't say it better. <laughs> it really was perfectly said, Susan. Um, <laughs> phenomenal. Um, thank you for that. Um, and and you're so right. I mean, like the thing is, you guys are telling a human story here, and what's what's more human than than a lot of these flaws that we still experience today? So, exactly. mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so for me, Team Mason, Perry, Della, Paul, um, they are, you know, so amazing and they rep- really represent the persistence against the uphill battle uh, for justice at a time during corruption, honestly. Why do you think that's so important for audiences to see, to see you know, today? Well, I think that, that, you know, there's the line in the show, there is no true justice, there's only the illusion of justice. And I think that that to us was a really sort of, uh, important almost like north star to 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 look at Mm -hmm. because it's this idea you know we expand this season from first season it's more about the city of la in areas that you wouldn't necessarily expect so we're it it really is about the haves and the have-nots and what does justice look like for for those two different groups um and to, to me, it was really important that we we explore that question um, because, like you said in your first question, I mean, it really still resonates today. Where does, you know, where is justice? You know, we're, I, I just say personally, I've been following the Alex Murdoch trial and, you know, and here's this very wealthy man. And I keep saying to, to my wife, he's probably going to get off. And, um, and to me, it is just like that, that injustice in the system that still exists because of who has the means and who doesn't is so fascinating. Well, and I think it is important to show characters who you maybe wouldn't expect be the ones who are crusading to say you can have hope, you can take on the fight, you can have a voice despite what the system is trying to tell you or how it's trying to dampen it down. And I think that that sense of hope through these three unlikely characters is a really important through line. And I, I would also add that the sense of justice is also going to be a little different from the perspective of each of, each of these characters yeah. too, because of their life experience. It, it absolutely does reflect as well on the show, um, which which was one of my favorite things about watching it. Um, speaking of your characters, um, Perry Mason, if nothing else, um, has been definitely a showcase of some of the greatest most talented performances that we've seen on television in a while. John Lithgow in the first uh, season and and Matthew got nominated for Emmys. I thought Tatiana was robbed as well for a nomination. <laughs> she deserved one. Um, but 
you guys up the ante this season from, you know, amazing talents like John and Tatiana with Hope Davis, with Catherine Watterson, with Paul Racy, and, and a whole list of, of amazing individuals that were just brilliant this season. Um, for season three, do you guys have potentially a, a guest list of talent that you guys might want to see um, interact with Team Mason? <laughs> Well, we would love to imagine a season three. Right now we're focused on season two. We have plenty of story, character, LA to explore if we're able to do a season three. And I guarantee we would write towards uh, incredible characters that hopefully continue to capture this top level talent. But right now it's about everybody loving on season two. <laughs> That's fair. Um, we'd love to see, uh, we always love to see the amount of talent and actors that come on board to this because really just the way that your talent just interacts with each other and the yeah. chemistry that they all have, it's phenomenal to see. Uh, I can't be more excited for folks to see the second season. I want to thank you guys so much for your time. It's thank been you. a real honor and thank you for putting such an important series to screen. Um, honestly, people are going to get a kick out of this one because it's, it's, it's so good and it's I, it's hard to top the first but you guys managed to do it so congratulations oh, thank you thank you Matthew, awesome. how are you um i'm kind of just dis disturbed by that backdrop of yours <laughs> i wanted to be part of the action this is where the action you're is in very amazing you're in so. you're in the heart of it <laughs> um thank you for having us i'm mike manal from the nerds of color and honestly it's really exciting to talk to you about um such a tremendous season series and a tremendous season of television um, we were fortunate enough to see the whole thing. No spoilers, of course, but um, just wanted to commend you on such a terrific job uh, this season and the previous season. It's been a wonderful, you know, pleasure to see you as Perry, honestly. <laughs> well, thank you very much. What words? You've made my Abs week. Absolutely. Um, you know, obviously, it's very difficult to follow up an iconic character and an actor like Raymond Burr, but you managed to do it and you managed to score an Emmy nomination for it as well for the terrific work that you've done. I think you just upped the ante here in season two. So I really wanted to ask, um, can you talk about the importance of Perry as a character to you um, and, and really why you love this character, uh, how you're trying to see it grow um, and how we will see him grow this season? Well, this, I mean, I want to start by saying like, you know, Mason's got such a soft spot in my heart, but as, as someone who, who is growing, I've never really played a character that kind of has that accelerated growth that we've seen in Mason in the, that where you see him at the beginning of season one to the end of season one is kind of night and day different. He, he, he 180s his life and becomes a trial lawyer overnight, essentially, because he sees something that's wrong and says, all right, I'm going to do something about it. And, and continues to grow, you know, into season two, we see with, you know, with his own son, how, how he's evolving as a father, how, although now a trial lawyer, he's living with this imposter syndrome that he's kind of trying to manage day by day as he doubts his own kind of qualifications uh, as to being who he is. So as an, as, as a character who evolves, like, I don't think I've done an arc that's kind of as dramatic as Mason's um, with every kind of episode. You're, all, you're always dealing with something not just new, but very, you know, on a, on a big scale that, that's new. Um, and there's so much room for his growth because, because you see him at the beginning of his legal career. So, you know, as just as a person, as a father, as a human, for, for, for where he can go from here, is, sky's the limit. Absolutely. Um, again, you do a tremendous job here. One of my favorite things about this season, honestly, is it's it's funny because we're watching a Depression era show and we are touching upon topics that were relevant to the Depression era as well. Certainly racism, toxic masculinity, um, all, uh, corruption in the courtrooms, um, all of that, uh, a lot of anti LGBTQ things. And it's funny because they couldn't be more relevant today. You know, a depression era show being so relevant today. And I wanted to ask you, you know, as an executive producer, um, where did that conversation come up to kind of really incorporate a lot of these themes into the show and kind of, you know, have it sort of echo a lot of the things that are going on today? I suppose a lot of those big themes were, were certainly um, mapped out before I even joined the project, you know, because, you know, I know Team Downey had this very strong idea that the core cast, the three, you know, Paul Della and Perry, were three outsiders, really, that found each other. Um, and they both, you know, all, all three have their own kind of 
you know their own the their own the the humps that they carry of 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 why they're they're outsiders um especially with with, with regards to the to, to kind of shining a light on the racism that we see you know drake experience um it was more it was an opportunity to kind of shine a light possibly uh as, as a depression era show it was possibly more depressing to see how possibly little we have evolved over a hundred years you know that we're still dealing with the same issues that you know are so quote unquote humanity kind of hasn't evolved to a degree and i suppose in a way it was just a way of um putting a magnifying glass on that absolutely um and i'm really glad that you guys did because it really you know, for me, it it kind of hit hard because there's so many things that went on. Uh, certainly right when the show premiered in 2020, um, that's when a lot of these things were even coming to light more prominently. You know, the BLM movement was was getting stronger, all of that. So to see it reflected in this season a lot more powerfully, a lot more strongly, it made me it, for me, it made it even a superior season to the already great first season. So oh, wow. so phenomenal job. Um, I have to ask about uh, two of the new additions to the cast. Um, Hope and Catherine are wonderful. Uh, what was it like working with them and welcoming them, welcoming them to the cast? I mean, we were just I, when when I heard that you know both had said yes, I was I was incredibly excited that you know just those those additions. What you just knew what they were going to bring, and and they did, and more. You know, it was it was inc it was incredible. We're just working with the with the two of them. But the cast as a whole, that you know, the the influx of kind of the talent that was brought in this season has been mesmerizing, and we were just we were just so lucky to put together the kind of the the team that we did. Absolutely, and the chemistry between all of you guys is is just wonderful. The way that Perry works with Della, works with uh, Paul, it's it's wonderful. I was going to call him Chris, but the character is Paul, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, no, phenomenal, phenomenal work. And your chemistry with Catherine as well in many scenes is, is terrific as well. Um, Matthew, I couldn't be more thrilled um, for folks to see this show and to see your work continuing to just thrive and shine. I think that they're going to be very excited by every cliffhanger on every episode. And I just wanted to say thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. It's been a real pleasure. I think you've just got yourself a job as my new publicist. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely happy to help out Team Mason. We Great, go. we're in, we're up and running. Thanks for your time. I just wanted to commend you both on amazing performances this season, on a phenomenal season of television, honestly. I think you guys upped the ante from the first season. Um, I was telling Matthew, I was telling Susan and, and Michael that as well. Really tremendous work um, all around. So phenomenal Thank job. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very much. You. Of course. Um, <laughs> I, I'd love to ask, um, can you guys touch on what it's been like to, you guys have been working together with Matthew uh, and the rest of the crew on this project. I mean, on the show, sorry, since even before the pandemic, you know, uh, cause it came out in 2020, their first season, what's it been like to really work together and grow as a team? And, uh, can you talk about like the chemistry and how that all developed between you guys since season one? I think it is very, very easy to work. I, I knew Juliet before we started Perry Mason. So just rejoining with Juliet was so exciting. So exciting, it's really. It's and then meeting Matthew, I call him Matthew, sweet Matthew, uh, and realizing how tender and like loving and compassionate he is, which kind of matches us all. We're all kind of too vulnerable for any 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 <laughs> usefulness <laughs> and and i found that the we just kept supporting each other and having each other's back and really checking in on each other more so second season the first season Much. even yeah. we really uh wanted to take care of each other maybe that's what we learned during the pandemic is that we all need a little bit of tenderness i don't know but it was a really cool coming together of allies similar to Perry Mason season two. <laughs> now, uh, I could definitely see that. And and honestly, just speaking of Team Mason, you know, um, with Perry, Della, and Paul, you guys, in my opinion, have really represented this uh, persistence against the uphill battle uh, mm -hmm. for justice during a time of corruption. 
Um, why do you think audiences really need this team today to, to see this group um, work together to, to try and take on these, you know, really, really intense cases? It's actually one of my favorite characteristics of Della is how persistent she is. And it's something yes. that, you know, I kind of probably drive, drove people mad a bit on set at certain moments, like pushing for like, let's just do one more take or let's just do, because some of that sort of, of her drive kind of filtered over to me. But I, I think one of the things in the period of being off from season one to season two is that we were all sort of watching the world change, you know, in front of us. And all feeling like there's nothing we could do or like what 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 does it matter like what's our voice worth or what really can we do about this huge situation that we're in and and that was really exciting being in this second season of the fact that these characters are like no we, we just keep going and we'll get somewhere and um and that actually every voice does matter and I think that that's something that for me this season I found really inspiring of um, and I, I felt like it was a huge part of the show was. Yeah, I think these three in this room in particular are important because you've got power in white, straight male, Perry Mason. You've got poor black male, Paul Drake. And then you've got this queer middle income. Are you rich? No, I mean, I came from. You a feel nice rich family, to Paul. But... You feel hella rich to Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like who else yeah. is going to solve the problem if not the citizens who are uh, 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 being subjected to the problem. So I think it's could be cheesy, but true that it requires us all to step in a room and have a humble conversation in order to come up with any sort of solution that has compassion in it. And I think that's what, you know, the foolish endeavor that these three people are on is trying to find solutions with compassion. Uh, and, you know, maybe maybe the world will learn from Perry Mason. I love that answer. Honestly, when you're watching the show, it just feels so relevant. Even though it's set in the Depression era, it couldn't feel more any more relevant today than it does. So, yes. um, Julia, I'd love to uh, expand upon how Della really explodes this season. You get some action in the courtroom in a really terrific scene. What was that like, <laughs> really just taking the lead there and really nailing some blows there at, during that case? That was, that was brilliant. I was, I just so grateful that Michael and Jack wrote that whole uh, journey for Della. It, it was incredible and very scary, actually, to be standing up in the courtroom when Matthew makes it look so easy. And then suddenly you're like, oh, God, um, which is how Della would have felt. So it, it was thrilling. I think Della's been, you know, a woman who's been hitting her, you know, head against the glass ceiling for a very long time. And in this unlikely trio suddenly is given a platform to do the thing that she's destined to do and um it was it was thrilling to play yeah wonderful and and chris you know paul is going through a lot this season as well very much emotionally so there's there's some questioning of his own methods and some you know reverberation from all of that kind of happening uh can you summarize really what's kind of going through his head well you know, he's he's doing all these things that may be kind of unseemly. Everything is going through Paul's head because everything yeah. is this new discovery. You're, you, you've got a man who thinks he knows who he is and he every day he's learning that he has no idea what he's talking about mm -hmm. and everyone can see it. He's definitely the emperor with no clothes in a few ways and he's in much more confined spaces being revealed by, you know, his brother-in-law, who's a jerk, he's not, he's super lovely, but like, he's really holds Paul accountable. Um, I forgot the question. I got excited. Uh, I, I like that you got excited. No, you, you answered it, which is really what was going through his head. Oh okay. yeah, his journey. It's a journey of watching, you know, just who is he really, right? It, with the first season, we got to see him. We got to see like, he's a black dude who doesn't love racism. Surprise, surprise. And what has what was in store for this second season and what is is watching him be torn to shreds to, in order to re reveal who he really is becoming. And I'm not even sure if at the end of the season we land on who he becomes, but we certainly watch him fight to be his old self, 
try not to be this new guy who's using, like you said, using these tactics that he thought were just reserved for a certain kind of person. Mm-hmm. What happens when you realize you're that kind of person? And that is our Paul in season two. There's something it's- also so really interesting that happened in scenes with the three of us where I feel like because these characters are all in their sort of own isolated little orbit of fighting their own issues, there were moments where suddenly Paul would be in the room and, and Della would be sort of like, huh, I'd never thought about it mm-hmm, from your mm-hmm, perspective. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she's so busy dealing with like, I'm a, I'm a gay woman <laughs> trying to be a lawyer in this world that she missed that. She misses that entirely. And for Perry, suddenly being with, faced with the two of us, there are so many moments of him going, oh, never thought about it from this place. And I, that's a great element. Of I wonder show. if that is also an answer to why it's important to see those three people in the room to realize that they're all fighting for the exact same shit. Yeah. And yeah. the same thing is in the way. Yeah. And if we all just kind of yeah. realize we got the same person kicking us in the teeth. Work together. Work yeah. together. It all comes full circle. You guys are brilliant in this, and I'm so excited for folks to see this season. You guys really up the ante. Um, congratulations again, thank and thank you. you so very much for your time and your wonderful answers. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Have a great one, everyone. professional artists and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC. In full color, you see me. The hard not like comics, movies,